yeah, hopefully this should get folks started and you can go out and build your own, uh, you know, paywalled content directly on Replit. Maybe you want to, um, you know, sell courses or books or music or something like that. You could set up a really simple uh, little integration here with Replit and then, uh, yeah. Okay, so today we have uh, CJ from Stripe to talk about how to create a web app with Python, Replit Web, and Stripe Checkout uh, with some paywalled content. So thank you for coming here, CJ. Thanks for having me, YK. This is great. Um, yeah, so I'm CJ, developer advocate at Stripe. If you have never heard of Stripe before, we are a platform that is building payments infrastructure for the internet. And our goal is to increase the GDP of the internet. We want to arm you and arm upstarts to be able to build your business and start accepting payments online. We, uh, we enable millions of businesses around the world to accept payments, make payouts, and generally manage their business using Stripe's APIs. Super excited to uh, get into the demo. Okay, let's get into it. All right, let's do it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. And this is the plan is we're going to build this application here. So if you want to access that secret sauce, we'll say, let's go. This is going to bring us to a path here that says secret. And this is actually um, behind an authentication step where you can log in with Replit. This is a tool that YK will show us or talk to us about um, that you can really easily plug in with the Replit web uh, package. And so here I can just authorize my account. And once I'm authenticated, I can see that I'm able to manage my billing. So this is the customer portal link. So I can actually like just open up the Stripe customer portal and manage a subscription because this customer or this user is already subscribed. So I can cancel my plan. I can cancel my plan. And uh, then we can head back over to the demo after we say that it was uh, $5 a month was too expensive for us. And once we're back to the demo, we see a checkout button. And if we want, we can hit checkout. And this is if we have never paid before, now we're gonna be able to subscribe, pay in $5 a month, so this is the Stripe checkout feature, which allows us to have access to this secret paywalled um, part of our site. And right now, all that's on there is the manage billing button. So this is what we're going to build today. So uh, let's get into it. So I'm on Replit. I'm looking at my own profile here. I actually want to create a brand new Replit using Python. Is that right? Will that work for <laughs> Flask or do I need to pick Flask specifically? Python's good. Python's good. All right, so we'll call this like paywall some content. Okay. Um, one of the really cool features of Replit is that you can invite people to join. So I'm gonna just create this join link here and send that over to YK so that we can hack on this together. All right, sent. And now, we are inside of a brand new Flask app. So the first thing, or it's just a brand new Python app. So the very first thing that we wanna do is add support for Flask. So we're gonna do that by saying from Flask, we wanna import Flask. And we probably also want to render templates. So we're gonna say render template. We also want to import redirect because we're gonna redirect to that checkout page. And we might also wanna mess around with some stuff from like the request so we'll just also import request here. Now, I think we can initialize a new instance of app like this, Flask with uh, name. And then we also want to import the, um, the Replit web package, which we can do from Replit. Uh, we can import web, we can also import DB. So we're gonna use this web package in order to actually like run our Flask app. And so at the bottom here, we can say web.run and pass in the app. And that should fire up our Flask app. Now at the root route, we want to show that like some sort of welcome page or like an index.html page. That's where we were showing like, this is the secret sauce, like let's go or whatever. So here we can say app.route. We're going to give it the root route. And by default, it should accept get requests. And we'll call this the index. And for now, we can just return like hello world and see if this thing will start up. <laughs> um, what's really cool too, is we didn't actually have to like install any dependencies. We just hit play and Replit is figuring out which dependencies to install. 
and it's resolving and it realizes that we need Flask and then we also need Replit. And those are sort of the latest versions of those, which is super handy. Um, cool. Also, yeah, a bunch of other dependencies that it needed. So that's pretty neat. And look at that, we've got a hello world. So this is kind of the basic to get a Flask app up and running. Um, the next step here is that we actually wanna maybe add some uh, some templating. So if we wanted to render, instead of just rendering back this like plain text, we can say render template uh, and pass in maybe like index.html. And this template by default is gonna come out of a directory called templates. And inside here, I think we wanna add a file called index.html. Um, and I never remember the like autocomplete for this. Uh, so we're gonna have a head and we want some sort of uh, body. And why don't we just start with like a simple header that says um, like welcome or something. And we'll have a, a link that says like access the secret page. Um, and that should be kind of a good start here, I think. Um, I don't know if, I, I guess I do need to like restart the server. Is that right, YK? Uh, yeah, but there is a, uh, there's a nice trick for it. Um, okay. By the way, can you invite me again? Like, I think you'll need to recreate the invite link. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, yes. Does it have to stay up? Oh, you know what? I clicked the X, right? So that deleted uh, yeah. it. Yeah, that's okay. right. no worries. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so don't don't yeah don't click on the X like right after you <laughs> right. right after you make your invite link. Um, cool. So yeah, let's let's talk about the trick. So what's yeah I mean YK is in the editor with me. This is super cool. So you want to jump down and uh, make it so that we don't have to keep restarting the server. Yeah. Uh, so I need to remember the exact you know syntax for this. Okay. Uh, but I think you know it's in the uh, you know this line. It's like um, debug true or something like that. Let okay. me. Uh, it, it might not be the right you know syntax, but let's let's see. Okay. I'm just gonna yeah. restart it and see if it works. Um, Unexpected. Yeah, maybe not there. here. Yeah, usually with Flask, I think when you say like app dot run down below. You can pass in like debug true. Um, okay, let's try that. But um, because this is using the web module, I don't know if this will work. So we'll see. Um, okay, whoops. Oh no, I lost the, <laughs> where did the thing go? The preview. Uh, uh, you might need to like here, I, restart it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I closed it instead of trying to open it here. Okay, so yeah, so now we've got this uh, this thing and it's working. Um, at least we've got a link and now it goes to slash secret. So um, cool. So yeah, I think this debug true thing inside of web run might work. We'll see when, it, when we add uh, like a new route. Yeah, do you, wanna, do you wanna try editing the index function and see what happens? Yeah, sure. Puts hello, let's see, save. Uh, oh, not, oh gosh, this isn't <laughs> Ruby. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Here we go. Print hello. And oh, because I did puts hello, it crashed. And then I had to restart anyways. So, uh, okay. all right. Hello again. And restarted. Nice. Okay. okay great. Perfect. It's totally working. Um, fantastic. All right. So let's add, let's add the secret route. So app dot route is secret. Now in order to get to the secret route, we want to make sure that you are authenticated. So we can use web.authenticated here. And then we just create this new route. And then we want to like render back some secret content or something. So we can maybe we can say render template or uh, return render template of secret.html. And we can add a new file here, secret dot html and this will be basically all the same stuff as 
the welcome page, except for this is going to be our super it, super secret paywalled content. Okay. And then maybe we have like a restart, uh, restart demo link there. And now if we run this, when we try to access the paid content, instead of being able to see the route, we see the login with Replit button. That's like kind of crazy that that's all you have to do is just drop in this, uh, this decorator for the secret route function. And now we have the ability to uh, log in. So if I click login with Replit, I get this modal, but I don't actually want to log in yet. So I'm just going to keep that. We'll keep that um, as is because in addition to logging in to see the secret content, we also want you to pay in order to see that secret content. And so um, what we want to do next is actually require that not only are you authenticated, but you are also subscribed in order to see this content. And so what we can do here is we can check if like users.current.get the uh, subscription status is something like, uh, you know, active. So in order to get the current user's subscription status, we need to uh, do a couple things. Number one, we have to actually like have access to a user database, right? We need to actually have access to some sort of database. And right now we imported the DB, the Replit DB module, but we haven't actually set up the database. So we can do that by going straight to the top here and adding this users variable that's going to create the user store. This is like a key value store, right? Um, so I think inside of the database here, it's just going to create a, a key value store. Is that right, YK? Um, also, I think you're muted. Uh, yes, I think, I think that's right. OK, cool. Great. So as soon as we hit this authenticated route, then we will, like, in order to actually like, access the content of this route, we will have to be logged in. And once we're logged in, we'll be able to access the current user through users.current and then um, one of the keys that we'll add to the user sort of object in the, our key value store is a subscription status. And if that subscription status is active, we'll let you see this content. Otherwise, I think what we wanna do is we wanna redirect you um, to some paywall, paywall. Okay, so there's gonna, we're gonna be redirected to some other route if there is no subscription status with active. So if we try to go through this flow again, um, we'll refresh the page here, access the paid content, log in with Replit. Let's actually log in this time. We'll say authorize. And okay, now that we're logged in, we, see, we actually see a 302. So we're being redirected, but because there is no paywall route, I think it's just failing to redirect us for some reason. Um, I wonder if we were doing it out here, if that would work. So authorize. Okay, so 404, great. So there is no, there is no route for slash paywall. So let's add that next. So we're gonna add a new route for paywall. And this route is also going to require that you're authenticated. And in this case, what we want to do is we could show, potentially we could show, you know, several payment options. So we could give you different prices or plans, right? Like when you're subscribing for a service, you can often see, you know, the good, better, best model or like the beginner, the beginner plan and then the enterprise plan or something. And so at this paywall route is where we could potentially show that content. So for now, we'll just return and we'll render a template with uh, paywall.html and we'll define what we actually wanna show inside of, that, uh, inside of that template. So we'll say, add a new file to templates, paywall.html. And in here, it's gonna be similar to one of these. But in addition to these, we'll say like uh, pricing or something. And then maybe we want to like list out our prices. Um, but for now, just to keep it simple, we can just create a form that will have a route to checkout. And we'll make the method for this form post. So this is going to send a post request. Uh, this is not, this is a form with the action is equal to checkout. And then um, 
inside of this form, we'll add a button that is going to just say like pay. And um, that will allow us to redirect to Stripe checkout. So when the button is clicked, we're going to send a post request to slash checkout. This will be a new route that we define that allows us to redirect to Stripe checkout. So from that paywall page, so now when we go back through the same flow, uh, we should see what's going on here. So, uh, okay, access the paid content. All right, so now we're at the paywall and we see this pay button, but there's no slash checkout route yet. So let's go add that. So here we're gonna say uh, app.route is slash checkout. And we're gonna only allow post requests to come into to slash checkout. Again, we're gonna require that you're authenticated to actually hit this route. And what we wanna do in here is we're gonna create a checkout session, a Stripe checkout session using the Stripe API. And then we want to redirect to checkout. So the first thing we wanna do is create a checkout session. So um, we can take a quick shortcut and look at the API documentation for creating checkout sessions on the Stripe documentation here. And we can just look at the Python version of the Stripe checkout implementation. So at the very top, we need to import Stripe. We also need to set our API key, and then we need to create a checkout session and redirect. So I will copy all of this, come back over here and dump in some of that there. Um, and then we will have our checkout session created here. And this will create our checkout session and it's gonna return. Um, the response is an instance of a checkout session. And that response will include a URL to which we can redirect. So down here, we can now say like return redirect session.url. And I think we wanna specify the code as like 303, just so that um, we know that it's like, it's moved or whatever. Um, okay, so let's talk about what this, what this method is actually doing here. So this is creating the API request. So this is sending a post request to Stripe, passing along a success URL and cancel URL. These are the URLs to which the customer will be redirected after successfully paying or after deciding to cancel paying. Payment method types, this is gonna be a list of payment method types. So you could support different wallets here like Alipay or WeChat Pay, or you might wanna accept like Ideal or Shiro Pay, things like that. Um, next up, we've got some line items. This is where you'll define all of the different objects that are gonna be the line items that someone will pay for. So this is the price, and whether or not the price is going to recur. So in our case, we, we actually wanna create a subscription instead of a one-time payment. So we change the mode to subscription, and then we wanna pass in a recurring price. So we'll pull up the Stripe dashboard. So if you haven't already signed up for a Stripe, you can go over to stripe.com and uh, register for an account. I need to switch accounts here. Um, so from inside of your Stripe dashboard, on the top right, you can enable test mode. And now all of the content that's here is test mode content. Under the developer section, we have API keys for, uh, for test mode. You'll know that you're in test mode and that it's kind of like in, in a sandbox environment because the keys will start with PK underscore test or SK underscore test. So I'm grabbing my secret API key here and we wanna come back and let's set those up inside of our um, environment variables inside of uh, Replit here. So I'm gonna set my Stripe secret key to the secret key that I grabbed from the dashboard. We'll also set up a Stripe publishable key. And this will be equal to what's in my Stripe dashboard. For today's demo, you'd actually don't need the publishable key. Um, but you will want a webhook signing secret, and we'll do that in a little bit. Um, but the piece that we were coming to the dashboard for was to grab a, um, a price, and we can actually create a brand new one. So the, the secret content that we want to hide is going to be like replit secret content or something. Um, that's going to be our product. And 
we can say that this is going to be um, for some sort of electronically supplied service. I don't know. Maybe it's going to be software as a service. Here we go. Um, and then the standard pricing is going to be, I don't know, $9 a month or something. Recurring, monthly, and uh, the final price um, is $9 plus tax. Um, the usage is not metered. So this is going to give us a recurring price object and a new product. Um, once we've saved this, the ID that we need is this price ID. This price ID is going to allow us to create line items that are used to redirect to checkout. So I can drop in that price ID here, say we only want one of them, and this should get us pretty close. So um, the one other thing that we need to do is set our API keys. So up here, I left this stripe.api key sort of just hanging around. And so in order to set our API key, let's import um, that from the environment variables. So we're going to use the OS package, which allows us to interact with environment variables from the operating system. And I think we can say get env. Is that right? Uh, so actually, the syntax is, is on the left hand you know, sidebar. Oh, it is. OK, yeah. nice. Environ. OK, os.environ. And then you use the square bracket syntax. Yeah. Perfect. OK, great. So this should set our API key globally so that we are you know, interacting with our Stripe account um, through the API for that specific Stripe account. Um, let's fire this up and see if we get any complaints. Because we uh, added a couple new packages, OS and Stripe, we needed to install those. So those are installed now. And I'm going to come back over here and refresh the page and hit pay. And we are redirected to Stripe checkout. We're going to pay for $9 a month. So we can enter in some uh, test card details here. So uh, on the Stripe documentation, there are several different card numbers that you can test in test mode. So you can see we're in test mode here. Those card numbers will allow you to trigger different scenarios like um, 3D secure uh, or like secure customer authentication. You can also save your information for one-click checkout. Um, we're you know, contributing to Stripe Climate. There's a lot of really cool stuff that you can build into uh, Stripe checkout. And a lot of this is configurable just when you're creating that checkout session object. So we were redirected. Quick, oh, go ahead. Question. Yeah. Is that um, is a checkout page? Is it new? Is it is it new? Like it's it's relatively new. It's been out for about a year and a half or so, I think. Hmm. Um, but there's tons of new features that are constantly being released, and so we can talk about some of the really exciting ones. Um, like uh, yeah. yeah, right now. So yeah, because when I learned about Stripe, uh, I remember it was it was more about like you know building your own checkout page. But this one is like built by Stripe, right? Yeah. So there's a couple different options. Like you can you can build your own custom checkout using Stripe elements. In fact, just today we released um, this brand new payment element, which is a drop-in component that is completely flexible and customizable. So you can build your own UI, but also support like several different payment method types. 18 right now out of the box at launch, and more will be added. It's fully localized in tons of different languages. Um, so this is like the new, yeah, this is like the latest iteration of Stripe elements where you just kind of like drop in one element and then add a little bit of JavaScript and then it will allow you to check out um, and build your own custom flows. So this is, a, this is something that you would build into your own page. The one that we're working with today is a Stripe hosted surface that you can redirect to. Um, that's also like, yeah, relatively new. I think it was launched 20, maybe 2019. So nice. Um, yeah, super, super exciting stuff. Um, but you, one thing you might notice is that we actually came back to example.com. <laughs> so um, right now, when we're configuring the checkout session, we are setting it up so that we're coming back to example.com, but we want this to be like coming back to our REPL. And so in order to get the success and cancel URLs, we sort of need a base. We need to know like, what is the, what is the, you know, the scheme and then our domain. And so one way we can do that is by pulling those values out of the environment variables again. Um, so please let me know if there's like an easier way to do this. I think 
uh, the way that I was able to get it working was by um, joining a bunch of different components. So we have like uh, HTTPS, we've got the scheme and the whatever, and then we can pull out um, from the environment, we can pull out the REPL slug, which is this paywall, right? So REPL slug and, oh gosh, um, and then uh, a dot. <laughs> Uh, and then there's going to be uh, um, the REPL uh, owner. That's like whatever the user is, I think. And then that's concatenated with dot REPL.co. Is that like the best way to do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. I think that's probably the cleanest way to do it. Okay, cool. Yep. So then, yeah, then we can use that base URL along with, I mean, we can just add like, slash uh, secret. If they successfully paid, we can redirect them back to that secret. Um, otherwise, we can redirect them back to the root maybe. So we'll just say base URL. Um, you can also embed the checkouts sessions ID directly into the query string if you want. So you can say like ID equals, and then in all caps, checkout session ID. Um, you might do this if you wanted to show like, okay, here's the breakdown of all of the payment details that were submitted when you created this checkout session and redirected, um, but it's not strictly required. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to show here was if we go back to our dashboard and we create another price. So maybe this one is gonna be like um, nine, but instead of USD, let's use euros. Um, then we might be able to see some more interesting stuff. Um, so we'll say add that price and then we will copy this price ID here and we'll replace this with that new price ID. And now we can pass in some payment method types that work with euros. So maybe ideal, Shuro pay, SIPA, debit. Um, and then we can click run. I think this should work right out of the box. So if we come back over here, access the paid content, click pay. Uh, okay, ideal cannot be used in subscription mode. Okay, so uh, ideal cannot be used in subscription mode. Uh, maybe those only work for, uh, yeah, for one-time payments. Okay, so let's uh, try this again. All right, so now we're redirected and you can see that we have card, but we can also use SEPA direct debit. And if we have a test SEPA number, we can drop that in right here. So really powerful, really flexible um, with, uh, with that. We can also, if we wanted to, we could say like, um, there's, there's several different arguments when creating that checkout session. So if we come here, um, we've got tons of different payment method types you can, you can pass in. If we wanted, we can pass in a client reference ID. We could also pass in an existing customer um, or we could pass in customer email, line items and a bunch more. So I think the next step here is to actually start tracking when the subscription is active or not. And so the way to do that is by setting up a new separate endpoint that will receive webhook notifications when events happen on the Stripe account. And so we can actually just go over to webhooks build in the Stripe documentation for building webhooks. And there is a Python example here that shows you a, this is actually a Django, a Django example, but it should work relatively well with Python. Um, so we'll copy, or with Flask, we'll copy that. And then the, the route is gonna be um, app, that route slash webhook and methods is just going to be post. So we're going to be receiving post requests to slash webhook. And we want to parse out the body. We're going to construct the payload. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to use the Stripe Python SDK to construct the payload from that JSON or to construct the event object from that JSON payload so that we can interact with it um, as, you know, formal Python objects. And the one event type that we care about is checkout.session.completed. And when that event fires, we want to grab the session out of event.data.object. And we want to look up the user, look up the user, 
and we want to like set their subscription um, status to active. Okay. The other one that we want to listen to is customer.subscription.deleted, in, in which case we want to like unsubscribe the customer. So we're going to like look up the user again and set their subscription status to canceled. Um, okay. So there's a couple of pieces here. Number one, we need to be able to like from the session object that we're going to receive in the webhook event, we need to be able to look up the customer based on their ID or some like reference to them in Replit. And so based on what I was sort of playing around with inside of the Replit, um, inside of the Replit DB package, it looks like the way that it, that users are uniquely identified is by their username. Is that right, YK? Yes, that's right. Okay. So if I wanted to, then the way that I would like pull out the, um, the current user is when we first construct the checkout session, we can pass in something else called um, subscription data. And this is gonna allow us to pass in some data that ends up being attached to the subscription object. So we can pass a meta, uh, metadata that is a, again, like a, a nested sort of JSON object with the username. And I think we can pass like user.current.usernames or is it users or user? I can't remember. Um, I think it's users. Users, okay. Yeah. Um, Cool. So this should pass along the username for the current user who is authenticated because we have this authenticated decorator on our checkout route. And this subscription data will mean that when we receive the, um, the customer subscription deleted, the subscription object that were passed as part of this webhook will have the username. And then we also want to pass metadata at the checkout session level so that we have that also um, inside of the checkout session completed webhook event. So inside of this uh, event type here, we can look up the user. So their username is going to be something like session.metadata at username. And in order to look them up in the database, is it just db at username? Is that how we find the user? Uh I think it's users uh, bracket username. Okay, users, right? Because yeah. yeah, we named the we sort of like named the database collection for for the user store users. Okay, so user right. square bracket username, and what we want to do here is we want to actually like update the subscription status. So this is going to be the user. We want to say user at subscription status is equal to. And then maybe we can just say active for now. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I think that should work fine. Cool. Uh, and then separately, if we want to look up the user later uh, for the subscription, then this ends up being very similar. So for the customer subscription deleted event.data object, we get back the subscription. And the subscriptions metadata will also have the username, which we can also use to look up the user. And then we can just change this to canceled. And I think that might work. Um, <laughs> we will, uh, so um, in order to re start receiving these webhook events, we need to tell Stripe about this route. And so we can do that by going into the Stripe dashboard under the developer settings in webhooks. We can add a webhook endpoint here. So we're going to paste in our REPL and say slash webhook. And then we want to tell it which event types we want to listen to. We want to listen to checkout.session.completed. And we also want to listen to customer.subscription.deleted. Now, technically, you could also listen to updated and get notifications when people are like up upgrading between different versions or downgrading between different versions, but this should work for now. Now, when we say add endpoint, um, we will get a, uh, a signing secret if we want to do signature verification. 
in the version of the webhook handler that we have right now, we're not actually verifying any webhook signatures, but we could do that to improve the security a little bit. We can also say send a test webhook. So once our app is up and running here, we can say send a test event, send a test webhook event, and we'll send that test webhook. And um, we got back a 500. All right, what error did we get here? Okay, request object has no body. Um, okay, so I'm probably parsing this incorrectly. Request dot body. Um, I guess maybe this is request dot data in Flask instead of request dot body. Uh, so let's try this again. Um, send the test webhook again. And name is not defined. Okay, let's see what error we get here. Uh, name JSON is not defined. Ah, so we have to import JSON. Okay, stop, restart. And then we'll send the test webhook again. And username. Key error username. So maybe, oh, you know what? Okay, so this is uh, this is because in the test data that we're sending, it doesn't have metadata with the username. So this is actually like a good failure. So we're receiving it, we're parsing it, we're trying to handle it, but our test data doesn't have um, doesn't have the username. So that's actually good. So let's actually go through the flow one more time and. Um, we actually need to create a new checkout session. So we'll come back over here, access the paid content, click on pay. Um, we're brought back to Stripe checkout. And we put in the test card number. And uh, just a quick question. Did yeah. you need to manually create this test card? No. So the test card, this test card is one of many um, mm -hmm. that are available in the documentation. So this 4242 card um, will accept any CVC, any future date, and then it will allow you to create successful payments in test mode. Um, there are other cards that let you test different, um, different brands, also like different countries and things like that. Um, there's also test, uh, um, test cards that will trigger different scenarios. So like in Europe, there's uh, this concept of secure customer authentication, which is kind of like 2FA for, um, for payments. When you put in your credit card, your bank might require that you also put in like a one-time code that your bank will like text you or something. Um, and so that's also a possibility. Um, and all of those, those are all just like test cards that are available uh, in the documentation. So you can just like copy and paste that in test mode and use it. Um, so we uh, HTTP response was not defined. So we need to just return um, invalid payload. Um, okay, so those should be okay. And let's rerun this. Um, oh, actually, so yeah, we got redirected back. We just didn't have our... Uh, um, our webhook handler failed because we were trying to use classes that are not available in Flask. They're from Django. So we're still cleaning up some of these like Django leftovers here. Um, so let's go through it one more time. So we'll say restart. And we, hmm, what's going on here? Not sure. Okay, so we're gonna access paid content. And okay, so we're able to see the secret, super secret paywalled content. So we must be logged in and subscribed. So that's fantastic. <laughs> um, and I think we can prove that by saying like print users at CJ Avila. Does that work? Okay. And then at like subscription status. Okay, so my subscription status is active. So that's, that's totally right. Um, and then can I just like wipe this out by doing this? And then when I try to come and see the super secret stuff, okay, so now we're like locked back out again after deleting that field in the database. <laughs> uh, okay, 
So if we go back through the flow, um, this time I'll use one of the cards that requires SCA just so I can show you what that kind of looks like. And so now when we try to subscribe, um, we're gonna be prompted for a second form of authentication. So like your bank's page would be inside of this modal and they might require you to pass like a one-time code that they email you, or you might have to log in here or similar. So you can say complete authentication in test mode. That's what you would see. Uh, and now we'll redirect back to um, back to slash secret and we're able to see all of the secret paywalled content. So this is all working uh, exactly as intended. Um, yeah. So the, the last thing that we could do is add a customer ID into the database, the Replit database, and then allow people to manage their billing. Um, perhaps we save that as, a, as an exercise for the reader. What do you think, YK? Sure, sounds good. Okay. Yeah, so um, if you want to check this out and play around with this, uh, this paywall Replit, I guess folks can just fork it, right, since it's public? Yep. Okay. Um, anything else that we missed or that we wanted to cover? Uh, did you want to make this ripple always on? Oh, how do we do that? Uh, left, uh, click the title of the ripple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. And then click always on. Always on. Okay. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Yeah, it, it's, cool. it's, it's a nice option for, you know, web apps basically. Especially when you're receiving webhooks, right? Like if you're, if you're going to be receiving notifications from Stripe as events are firing on your account, this is definitely something that you would want is to have it always on. Um, yeah, and, I'm kind of yeah. curious, what would happen if the web app, you know, happens to fail when, you know, when the web app, webhook comes in? Yeah, great question. Um, because that would be awful, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> You know, if your app's down for a little bit when a, uh, an important event happens on your account and uh, you drop that event. Um, thankfully, one of the features of the Stripe webhook system is that if it does not receive a 200 type status code, so even if it re receives like a 300 or higher, then it will retry with exponential back off for up to three days. So mm -hmm. you basically have like three days to fix your app. We'll also send you like email notifications, letting you know, Hey, your web, we tried to like uh, hit your webhook endpoint and it's failing, go and check it out. Um, so that you have a little bit of opportunity to go back in and make sure that things are working, um, successfully. Nice. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. So yeah, Replit is what a great tool, right? You can come in here, you can collaboratively edit, it gives you uh, an interface. One of the reasons why we were uh, playing around with the demo in this full view is that Stripe Checkout does not work inside of an iframe. So this preview, while this preview is um, excellent for you know testing things locally, that's one of the reasons why we sort of broke out of that iframe and we're running um, in, uh, in the full browser. Um, but yeah, hopefully this should get folks started and you can go out and build your own uh, you know, paywalled content directly on Replit. Maybe you want to, um, you know, sell courses or books or music or something like that. You could set up a really simple uh, little integration here with Replit and then, uh, yeah, put a, put a little paywall in front of your content. So um, yeah, thanks a ton for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one.